Today we're going to be using vanilla JavaScript, PHP, and SAS to create a demo that talks with reCAPTCHA version 3 and also has validation. And on successful send, there we go. Hey guys, welcome back to a new episode of Dev Drawer. Um, today we're going to be going over how to create something in reCAPTCHA. Uh, mainly the reason um, is that I didn't have reCAPTCHA installed on my website and I started getting a whole bunch of spam. So I decided to go ahead and use reCAPTCHA. Um, we're going to be using reCAPTCHA 3 today, so I'll be going through the entire process of how to integrate it into your site, how to get it set up through the reCAPTCHA server, get your API keys and all that kind of stuff. And we're going to be using uh, PHP, Vanilla.js, and SAS to kind of create just a simple form page that has a thank you page. After everything's been submitted, it's going to have some validation in it, um, and everything is going to be done in real time. So let's get started. So first thing I want to do is uh, start creating our file structure. Um, so the first thing we're going to need is a new file. We're just going to do index.html. Um, and then we're also going to create a folder to house our JavaScript and our SAS. So let's just say this is going to be assets. And then inside of it, I'm just going to create a new folder called JS and then a new folder called SAS. Okay. So this should get us started. Uh, let's go ahead and do HTML5. And I'm just going to let me move that over. I'm going to call this, uh, let's say, reCAPTCHA C A P T C H A V3 demo. Okay, let me uh, shrink down the screen just a little bit. There we go. Okay, um, so we're just going to create a generic form. So that form is just going to, actually, let me go ahead and do, I'm just going to add um, a reference to Bootstrap's CSS, so I don't have to worry about that. You don't have to do this, but I'm just going to have it in there. Um, I'm not going to use any either JavaScript or anything like that. I'm just using pure vanilla JS, uh, but I want to have the Bootstrap look to it, so we can go ahead and get started there. Now let me save this, and I've already got something set up on my local. Since we will be using PHP to process the transaction, um, you do need to have it on a PHP server. So in this case, I'm using WAMP, uh, but you can use you know your own Linux server or your actual website, you know local or whatever it is. Uh, before I get too far into it, um, if you like these kind of uploads, you know definitely give me a thumbs up. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, you know, leave something in the comments for me, or if you want me to do a tutorial video for you, um, you can either, you know, become a member and ask me directly, or you can leave a comment in a video. I usually respond to them within a day or so. So if you're interested in anything, let me know. Um, if you like this type of video and you're not a subscriber, please hit the subscribe for me. It does increase my reach. Um, so yeah, just a little plug for me. Anyway. Let's get started. So let's do div container, and then I'm going to just add a break tag. Let's do an h1 here, and let's do class uh, text center, and let's just say reCAPTCHA v3 demo. And then finally, let's start our form. So the form action. We don't really need one because we're going to be processing it with uh, JavaScript using uh, fetch. So we don't need to have an action where it actually does anything, but we do want it to post. So we're going to do method post. And then we're going to give it an ID of contact and a class of contact. So inside of this, we want to have a few different fields. Um, these fields are essentially going to be just first name, last name, email address. So I'm just gonna write out the code really quick for that. So I wanna put everything in a row. So we're gonna do div row. For this first row, I wanna have two columns. Uh, so div column dash md6 times two. 
and then finally I want to have inside of each column I want to have a form element we're going to use that form element to do validation so let's do div form element alright so now we have those two so let's go down a little bit further and I don't need to have this one in a row so I'm just going to do div form element and that's going to be for the email address and then finally one more div dot form element which would be for the text area um, finally we need to have a button so let's just add a break tag because of the text area and we're going to do button type equals submit and then the class is just going to be the standard btn btn large and the primary uh, let's go ahead and also give this an ID of submit button and we're just going to have it say send message okay so now we have our button and let's create our elements here and here so the first one we're going to create is going to be the first name so we're going to do input and it's going to be type text name equals f name id equals f name so the name part of it is for the uh, php processing which again we're not really using it so we don't necessarily need name but the id is important because we will be using uh, javascript to post it so let's do class and this is just going to be a form control and we're just going to do form control large um, and let's also go ahead and put in a placeholder. So placeholder equals first name, and then we're just going to say that it's required. So another part that we need to have is um, a feedback. So if it's invalid, we want this div to show. So we're going to do uh, div invalid dash feedback, and then inside of this, we're just going to have the message that it needs to say if something is incorrect. So I'm going to copy this down here and we're just going to change this to L name, L name, and last name. And right now I'm just going to make every element required so you can do that as you need to. Alright so now we have a, another text box that we're going to be using for our email address so let's come in here and change this to email and let's say email address please enter your email address and then finally down here we're going to have a text area so let's do text area and the name is going to be message and the ID is also going to be message so we can keep the column in the rows the same and let's add a class equals form control form control large and then finally a placeholder placeholder equals um, how can I help you? Okay, and then finally we need to also put in div invalid feedback. And this one's going to be please enter a message. Okay, so now we kind of got our form set up. So if we come over here and refresh, you know, we have the form kind of looking the way we want it to. So inside of this column, I'm going to add a break tag just so it splits it up a little bit for me. So I want to have this in here inside of the column. So not only does it add a new line here, but whenever it goes mobile, it'll also add space in between them. Then we can just put in a break tag after that. Okay, so now we have it where currently it's not going to do anything. You hit submit. And just so we can see what we're doing, I'm going to pull up the console log. 
and inside of this console log we need to start doing validation so whenever we submit the form we want it to run the validation so let's come inside of our uh, JS folder we're going to create a new file and we're going to call it init.js and then we're going to come down here to the bottom of our index and we're going to link it out in right here so let's do script source equals slash assets slash js slash init.js all right so now we have our initialized folder or initialized JavaScript file here and again it's going to be using uh, pure vanilla JS so all of this is going to be written using that all right so let's do window dot add event listener and we want to do it on load and then we want to run this function um, that passes it down um, all right so let's just go ahead and put in you strict to make sure that it's using the strict formatting of um, uh, I can't even I don't even know what version is supposed to be in but we'll make sure that it adheres to the strict formats um, okay so first thing we want to do is define our form so we're going to do const form equals document dot query selector since there's only one form we're just going to use query selector and that's going to reference contact okay so then after that we want to add a submit listener to that so let's do form dot add event listener submit function and this time we want to pass the event so that we can prevent it from submitting so first thing once we get into the submit we're going to do event dot prevent default and then here I'm just going to do console log dot form submit it so that we can actually validate it over here and we hit this we can see that it's actually submitting the form it's not doing anything else so it's actually preventing it from running the form because you know there's no action but it would refresh the page if there was if there's not an action and we're not preventing it from uh, preventing the default okay so first thing we want to do inside of here is grab all of our fields so we're going to do uh, let uh, let's do fields equal document dot uh, query selector all since there's multiples and we called our form contact and then each element has a form control uh, class on it so not field let's do fields okay so um, let's also create a variable that's going to help us with the validation so we're going to create a variable let's just call it let valid equal true okay so now let's go through a for each loop so we're going to do for var i equals zero i greater than or less than form uh, let's see for fields fields dot length and then we're going to do i plus plus and this is not supposed to be a comma I think I did this in my last video semicolon okay so now this should loop through our fields for us so let's say we're going to if there is any errors present every time they're submit the form we want it to remove those errors so we're going to do fields i dot class list dot remove no error okay all right so let's check to see it so we're going to do if fields um, I dot value is equal 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 to blank we want to add a class to it so we're going to do fields I so it uses the field that it's currently on class list dot add has error 
And then we're also going to display the next sibling element, which would be this invalid feedback message. Since it's going to be hidden, um, we're going to make it visible. So let's do fields i dot next element sibling dot style dot dis uh, dot style dot display equals block. And then finally, we're going to do valid equals false. Okay, so that should cover if the value is blank. So now let's come down here and do an else statement. And just in case it w did have an error and then they fixed it and then they went and submitted it again, but it's still failing somewhere, we want to remove that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this has error here. And instead of adding it, we are going to remove it. And then I want to add a class of no error, which should make it green. We'll get into the CSS part of it in a minute. Um, but that should make it green. And then finally, we want to take the next sibling and we're going to display none. Okay, so, and then let's come down here after our for each loop. We want to do if valid equals true. We're just going to do console.log it's valid. Okay, so now if we come over here and refresh this and we submit, you can see now it's saying please enter your first name. Um, so let's go ahead and start working on the CSS that's going to deal with this has error, which would highlight it in red, or no error, which will highlight it in green. So if we go into our assets inside of SAS, let's create a new file and call it style.scss. And then inside of this file, um, let's do a few things. First thing, I just want to do the body, and I always change my color to 333, just because. Um, next, let's do um, form control, and inside of this, let me clean up the form control elements a little bit. Just this is my personal preference. Uh, you don't have to do it this way, but I'm going to do a few things on it. So border one pixel solid three 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 and form control large we're going to do height calculate and let's do 3.5 rem plus 2 pixels and then padding will be 1 rem and then 0 0.75 rem finally font size will be 1 rem and let's go ahead and do the placeholder as well. Let's do font size 1 rem. Okay, so now we can actually start working on these errors. So and has error. We want to do a border of 1 pixel solid red. And then uh, and no error. We want to do a border one pixel solid green. And then finally, let's just come in here and say, we're gonna eventually add an error class to it. So let's do error. And this is just gonna be color red. And success color green. Okay, and now let's watch the SAS. It produces a CSS, so let's go ahead and grab that CSS and add it to our style sheets. So we're going to do link href equals assets slash CSS slash style dot min dot CSS. 
And if you need to know how to do what I just did with SAS, um, I have another video, you know, how to create and how to set up SAS. So you can look through my channel. Um, and there's a video specifically regarding creating like your own bootstrap and SAS. And I show you how to set it up. So that way that you can kind of set it up the way that I have mine. But I'm not going to get into that part right now. Um, you can definitely take a look at it. Okay, so let's come over here and see what this has done. So let's do a hard refresh. And it's not. So let's see, what's this? Assets, CSS, style.min.css. No, we didn't add it to my assets folder. Okay, I can live with that. There we go. All right, now we're good. So if we hit that, now it highlights it in red. Okay, so let me also come into this uh, SAS and I want to do some stuff on the button as well. Because I don't like the border radiuses at all. Border radius zero, border zero, and then add btm primary I'm going to use my color so you can use whatever you want to here but this is my color for dev drawer uh, let's see 38a 4ef all right and then let's do on this we're going to do and hover we're just going to make it a little bit darker so background color I use the same one and then let's just hover over it and make it a little bit darker okay so now we have our primary button and if we refresh this now good it's reflecting it um, I think that is all we need for SAS so I'm gonna stop watching it and I'm gonna close out of this okay so now if we hit our message uh, send message it tells us that we uh, have all these things so if we come in here and we type in something let's hit that now it turns to green removes the message so we got our validation is working correctly now that we have our validation working I want to start working on the um, where it's going to be processing so in order to do that let's scroll down at the end of our form I'm going to add in a uh, div so actually right before that so let's do div ID and alert so this alert is going to present us with a message and that's going to basically say that it's processing blah 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 okay so um, I think I actually want to wrap these inside of a div let me just check my notes I do okay so I'm going to wrap these fields into a div and I'll show you why in just a minute so I'm just gonna call it div form fields and then I'm gonna take this entire thing starting from here let's just go down until it ends which would be where the button is we want to wrap that entire thing in the div so whenever the form is submitted, I want it to show a message here and basically hide the form unless there's an error. If there's an error, then it shows the form. Um, okay, so right now we have it saying it's valid. So if we start to fill out this, and there is no email validation going on, it says it's valid. Um, however, I do not want that so I need to give it let me take away the form control large there I think that's yeah that was messing it up okay so we see that we have you know everything is valid previously so what I want to make it do is whenever it's processing and it's checking everything I want it to hide so instead of saying is it's valid we are going to come in here and um, basically hide the form so we're going to do document dot query selector and that new class div that we just added is form fields and then we're going to do style dot display equals none 
and then let's also put that alert to actually say something. So document dot query selector, and we called it alert inner text, and let's just make it say something like processing your submission. Please wait. Okay, so now let's come back over here, refresh it, and let's fill out all the information again. Or actually, let's hit it, make sure it still works. So test at example.com, and then this is a test. Something did not work, so let's see what didn't work. Form fields. We did call it form fields, right? Um, well, form fields. Let's make that a lowercase. All right, let's try it again. So, dev drawer test at example.com. This is a test, and if we hit submit, processing your submission, please wait, and then it would actually run through the recaptcha stuff. If it fails on the recaptcha, it will redisplay the form. Uh, which we can get into that in just a second as well. Um, so let's come over here and I want to make this text center. So class equals text center. Okay, and then also just so I don't have to keep typing all this stuff in, I'm going to put in some um, dummy text. So value equals dev, value equals Drawer. This one will be value equals uh, test at example.com. And then inside of the text area, we're going to do this is a test message. Now, if we refresh this, there we go. It makes it a little bit easier for us to um, mess with it. Okay, let's switch back over to here. And inside of this, we need to start getting it ready for uh, Google um, recaptcha. So let's come over here. I'm just going to Google Google recaptcha. Uh, let's see. I need to create a new one. So let's go to V3 Admin Console. Um, hmm. Give me just a second. I don't have anything signed into this account. So give me just a second. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back now and I'm logged in. So I went ahead and created a V3 recaptcha demo that we're going to use, but I'll show you the steps. So whenever you get into this, you may or may not have anything, but apparently I have 16 sites. So we're just going to hit create and then you would type in, you know, whatever your label is, recaptcha v3 and currently we're using recaptcha.local so you can test it so you can do recaptcha.local um, or your actual domain put in the email address that you want which I'm going to be blanking out and then you can accept the terms and submit uh, but for right now let's go back over here to the site that we're actually using and we are going to grab the keys for it so let's go to our settings and you can see here that I have recaptcha local and we're going to take these keys and we're going to copy them so one thing that we need to have on our index.html we need to have at the very bottom a reference to uh, recaptcha so you can click on here to see client site integration it'll give you like a URL that you need to add to it so we can copy this URL and we're going to paste it right above our init.js now there is something that we need to do to it and that is going to be we're going to add a variable to it so question mark render equals and then let's go back to our recaptcha over here and this site key is your public key so we're going to take that and that's going to be our render um, and then we're also going to keep, make a note of this secret key so for right now I'm not going to do anything with that um, but we have where now if we refresh this it shows the little recap show over here um, so that's cool alright now 
it's not going to do anything. So you know the message would still be submitted, and um, you know nothing's going to happen just because you have that badge. You actually have to have it where it processes the information. So we're going to come back over here, and currently we're going to check to see if um, it can gather a token and then add it to our um, form over here. So first thing I want to do is we're going to use Gree Captcha. Gree Captcha dot ready, and then function, and we're going to pass in this information. So the first uh, call is going to be dot execute, and that's going to again use our public key. So it's going to dot execute. Uh, let's see, and then our action is going to be contact, which will match um, the form, but for right now, it doesn't. Okay, and then after this, we're gonna do a then function, and we're gonna pass in a token that it generates, and then that token is, nope, don't need that. Okay, so we're gonna pass in that token, and it's going to add it to a field that we are going to create on the site itself. Okay, so let's do um, let's do let recapture response equal document dot get element by ID and now we need to add that element um, so well, let's first do recapture dot response value equals token so we need to add an element that has this ID on our form so let's scroll up over here and inside of our form we are going to do an input type equals hidden and then the name is going to be uh, what did I call it over here uh, recapture response so I already copied that so let's go over here it's going to be name recapture response ID equals recapture response and that part is done so now why is this not lining up where it needs to be okay so we got recapture dot ready function uh, oh that's because it needs to be recapture dot execute uh, let me go ahead and move all of these over and we can close that out okay so now we have dot execute um, and then we're going to set that value so if we come over here and we refresh this I'm going to inspect this so we can see the value get populated in real time so if we go to hit submit the token is being validated because everything matches and it's filling in this token um, and also just in case you're wondering this key that's here um, this is just a demo key once I get done making this tutorial it's not going to work so if you try to use that as part of your API it's just not going to work so it's best if you go in there and create your own just so you can track it number one and number two it would actually be a valid key um, so don't worry about trying to copy and paste my key because it's not going to be the same as the key that you need and I'll notate that in the documentation okay so now we have our token being generated we need to run a fetch command so let's do fetch and we're going to do slash send.php which is a file we'll create in just a minute and then the method for this is going to be post and the body is going to be new form data and we're just going to pass in form so now that we have that, we need to run another then response equals response dot text. 
and then finally then response equals to this function where we actually process it. For right now, let's just do console.log and response. Okay, so now we need to create this send.php. So inside of my main file, I'm gonna do send.php. And this is where everything kind of gets, um, it gets validated once again. And then it also goes to and use your, your private key for reCAPTCHA to validate, get a score and all this kind of stuff. And then it returns whether it was successful or not. So we're gonna go ahead and write that part out. Um, first thing I wanna do is check and make sure just in case it went through somehow, uh, we wanna make sure that it's coming across with valid data. So is valid. And then we're going to check against the post. So if, because the fetch request is gonna be sending a post to us, so we can use PHP to check for post. So we're gonna do if post f name is not equal to blank. And, uh, and, I'm just going to copy this. So if post name is not equal to blank and L name is not equal to blank, and then finally email. Put these in the right place. Okay. And then finally message. So if it's not equal to blank, right, there we go. So if it's not equal to blank, we want it to return true. Um, otherwise, we can just return false. Okay, so we have this check-in to make sure that all of the post variables are being sent over, all the required fields that we want are being sent over. If not, then it's going to just throw it back and say that it's not valid. Okay, so let's write that out. So if is valid, if it comes across as true, we want it to do something. So let's do um, success output e equals, uh, let's say your message um, was sent successfully. And then let's have an error output. Actually, no, we don't need to declare that there. So let's declare these up here. So let's do success output, just make it equal to blank. And error output, also make it equal to blank. So if it is valid, we want to have success output. If it's not valid, then we want to have an error output and make it where it says, please fill out all of the required fields. So normally people won't see this error output just because it's going to be valid by the time it hits there here, but just in case you know someone's got JavaScript turned off and they're trying to circumnavigate it, it'll still run against what's uh, being sent over so we can validate it. Now we have to return something, so we're going to create an output so we're going to do output equals array and then error equals the error mess uh, error output and then success equals the success output and then we are going to do echo json encode output Okay, so now we have uh, what we need um, for this to actually process. Well, most of it. So once we get into the is valid, we're going to start coding the uh, reCAPTCHA, but I just wanna see what it's producing right now. So it's not producing anything because we are, let me see. So we're doing a console log response and let me just reload it just in case. If 
patch on window. Get, uh, did I label that wrong? Fetch. Oh, that's because I spelled method wrong. Okay, so now let me refresh it. Uh, let's look through the code. So, method post body's coming from the form, then response. E uh, it's not supposed to be an equal, it's supposed to be an arrow function. Okay, let's try this again. There we go. Your message was sent successfully because everything's been filled out. And if we try to do it without filling out everything, it's just going to hold us back over here unless we, you know, turn off JavaScript. But for right now, this should be good. Okay. So now we have it processing how we need to. So let's go back over to our um, send. Uh, let's see, send. Okay. So now if it's valid, before we get to the success output, we have to run it against recaptcha. So first thing we need to do is create a variable called recaptcha. Captcha URL. And then this is going to be equal to https www.google.com too many o's dot com slash recaptcha slash api slash site verify and this is going to verify um, it's going to be the, the, the URL that we use to verify our response that we're getting as a token alright so let's do recaptcha secret and then this is going to be equal to the recaptcha secret that we have here so this is our secret code here we're going to paste that in okay and now let's do recaptcha equals file get contents recaptcha url dot secret equals uh, let's see recaptcha secret and we're going to do dot and response equals recaptcha then we have to create a variable for this response Okay, so let's create a variable for our recapture response. Okay, let's go back over here and just do a refresh. Um, just to get this all set up. So we need to set up our recapture response. So let's do right here. We're going to do recapture response equals post recapture response is what I call what we called it I believe so recapture response okay Re ah. recapture response okay all right so now we have our recapture the response to secret the URL which is all being built here Okay, so once it hits that file get content uh, contents, we're going. It's going to be sent back to us as JSON. So we need to do a recapture equals JSON decode recapture. All right, so now we have where the message is going to be sent, and it's going to be received, and it's going to return a JSON. So if I need to, let me see, I'm going to do a echo JSON encode recapture, and then I'm going to die the script um, so that we can actually see what the response is here. So if I hit send message, now it's going to come back and say that it's a score of 0.9, which is good. Uh, we want it to be at least over 5, and then the action that's being sent over is contact. So we need to just kind of check against this information. Okay, so let's come over here and we no longer need to echo it out. Let's uh, check the response. So if recaptcha success 
equals true and recapture score is greater than or equal to 0 0.5 and recapture action equals action equals contact we want it to uh, basically run the email routine so I'm gonna put a note right here so run email send routine so that means that it was successful um, if it does not equal to all of those conditions we're going to do error output equals something went wrong please try again later okay so that uh, pretty much covers the recaptcha part of it um, so let's see what it does so if we hit some message now processing your submission error success so errors blank success your me message was sent successfully because it met all of the routine or all of the information that we need so it's able to send the email routine now which would be simply running a php mail function and you can google php mail function uh, it's pretty easy to set up if you have never done it before uh, but this is where we're going to be running our email routine okay so now we need to come back over here and instead of displaying the response we want it to do a few things so first thing let me get rid of this um, if the error is present we want it to do something so let's do constant uh, response text equals json.parse response and we're going to check this to see if there's an error present so if uh, response text dot error is not equal to blank is not equal equal to blank um, we're going to do document dot uh, query selector alert and then it's going to be inner text equals response text dot error and this needs to be a capital T um, and then we also want to uh, modify the class list to show it as an error so let's do document dot query selector alert again dot class list dot add equals error and then finally we want to show the form fields again so document query selector and this is going to be class form fields dot style dot display equals block and then we're just going to return so it exits out of the function um, so that's our if statement there so if it does not have an error we don't need to check for success because success will be present um, so if error is present it's going to run that and it's going to return exit out successfully if there is not an error we want to kind of do the same thing that we're doing here so let's take these two and instead of having inner text response error we want it to be response success and instead of error here we want that to be success as well and let's also just go ahead and um, well let's see what that looks like so let's refresh this hit submit processing your message was synced successfully so what I wanted to do is redirect to a page so let's create a new file and I'm just gonna say thanks.html and then inside of this file um, and just copy over this we can remove the form from it and we can also remove uh, pretty much all the script 
I'll leave that script in there. But you don't need the recaptcha except on uh, pages that you want to actually display the recaptcha. Okay, so inside of our container, let's go ahead and get rid of this too. We're going to do div dot um, row uh, justify yeah, div dot row dot justify dash content center. And then div um, let's do column dash md9. Let's put our h1 and let's do it this way h1 text center. And then this is going to say just say thanks. And then div text center. Uh, let's see h2 your message is on its way and let's say something like your message has been sent we will respond as soon as we can and I'm just going to also add a link back to the home page just for this demo you can have it go wherever you want it to go um, Let's see back to home and let's go ahead and add in a class for this it's class equals btn btn primary and let's just do btn large all right so now if we send that well i forgot to make it redirect um, so inside of our success here after it shows our success, we're going to do window.location.replace and it's going to go to thanks. Okay, so now if we come back over here and refresh and submit, it'll still show our message and then it redirects very quickly. Um, it's giving me an error here for this number four here because there's no form. So we could technically check for that, but right now I'm just going to remove the script uh, basically we would check in here to see if the form exists then add it if it doesn't then don't um, but for right now this is the only thing that this thing does so I'm not too worried about it okay so let's go back home and just check out a few things all right so it looks like everything works so I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to remove the values just so that y'all have a working script that doesn't have any dummy, da uh, dummy data in it. Go back home, refresh that. Everything seems to be good here. So that is essentially how you do a reCAPTCHA v3 integration uh, using vanilla, J uh, vanilla JavaScript and PHP. So one more thing before I leave. Um, this thing right here, a lot of people don't like it. Um, I was fixing to close out the video then I noticed it down there. Um, you have to have some kind of information saying that you are using reCAPTCHA from Google. Um, the best way to do this is to hide that and you have to display a message. So directly underneath our um, send button here we're going to add in another few lines and then P Let's do class equals text center. And then you need to have um, this text here, which I'll provide in the documentation for this. But it's basically saying this site is protected by reCAPTCHA and then a link to the privacy policy and a terms of service. So if we refresh that, that's what we needed to say. But now we can get rid of this. So let's open up our SAS and you can essentially just hide this div so this is um, the Greg Kepcha badge so we're gonna take that and we're just going to add it here and then do display none and we watch our SAS just to generate it refresh it hard refresh it it's gone and you have that privacy policy in terms of service down here. So you have to have either the badge or you have to have this text. Um, you can't get around it for any of your forms that use reCAPTCHA. Uh, just for um, 
privacy purposes. So it's good to have it on there. Um, but I think that is going to do it for this. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this kind of video, you know, subscribe. I got plenty of other videos. I think I'm up to almost 100 of them now um, in the 90s somewhere. Um, but I got plenty of other videos like this that work with PHP and JavaScript and SAS and databasing and all this other kind of stuff. So if you're interested, you know, definitely hit the subscribe for me. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions about it, leave me a comment and I will get to you as soon as I can. But I think that's going to do it for now. So I will talk to you later.